It's another week of looking at some possible adjustments, tweaks, and wrinkles to keep your offense, defense, and special teams rolling as we hit the midseason right here. Today we're going to focus on offense, talking about how you can add some screens to give some diversity and even wrinkle or two to your offense. On the defensive side of the ball, we're going to talk about movement and the technique that needs to be taught and refined along with that. And on special teams, we're going to talk about finding a phase of each unit that you can work on and improve this week. So let's get into the offensive side of the ball and screens. We're hitting mid-season and teams have gotten a chance to see what you do. They're studying you up on film and trying to hone in on your tendencies. So the last thing you want is for your offense to bog down. So finding a way to pick up a chunk of yardage or even a touchdown at a critical time can help propel your team towards its goals. I like the idea of adding a screen to what you already do to be able to get an explosive play or break a tendency. So if you already run screens, you can make your screen game more multiple or add a screen to some of your best runs, passes, or even to a wrinkle that you've already added. I think in football, one of the best teams at running screens from an execution standpoint I think they're also the most creative is the Cleveland Browns. And I I keep saying it's something I'm going to sit down and study all those screens. I am going to get to that. I want to understand exactly what they do to make theirs the best. What makes their screen game so good beyond the execution is that they run their screens off of runs, off of passes, off of play actions, and even off some of the gadget plays. They're great at running a gadget play every game. You can expect that to come back either later in the game or in the next game with some kind of a wrinkle to it. And a lot of times they'll implement some screen into that as well. The purpose of the screen is to get the defense focused on one thing, chasing that down, and then getting your blockers onto level two and level three and creating those explosive plays. When I think back to the beginning of my coaching career, a screen always seemed to be a standalone play. Uh, we ran receivers off. We would screen into the boundary or the field, whichever seemed to provide the most advantage. And those kind of screens, I felt, became pretty easy to sniff out, especially if there was a tendency to, to be running that on a certain down, right? If, if you're a pass team, typically you get into a situation where you're behind the chains a little bit and screen might be the option there. So I think part of this comes in setting up your terminology properly to being able to take one component of your offense and adding it to another to provide great diversity in your offense and a synergy between those concepts that you need for the big play. So thinking back to what we did at Baldwin Wallace, for us, it was about realizing how we could take that one word, in this case, screen, and make it link uh, to another component or another concept. So the word screen is, in in effect, a, a conjunction. We have a few types of screens in our offense, and we refer to our tailback screen as outside We refer to receiver screens as slip screens uh, to our slot typically, but that could go to like a boundary receiver as well. And so we would create something like Y slip right, tagging the player that we wanted uh, and and then adding uh, that to a concept, right? For us, it was not just that we were running the screen, but that we were tagging it to a concept. So even those slip screens, we like to tag off of maybe a certain run or, or a look. Uh, The rest of our our screens, we would think about using our own tendencies and frequently we would use run and pass concepts to get the defense reacting one way to open a clean alley and get our linemen out to their blocks. For example, uh, if you have a crossing concept that you know pass defenders will run with, you can get the defense moving and reacting to open up the alley for the screen. It's not just about running guys off. It's about also getting, getting their eyes focused in a different spot away from that screen, right? That safety who's, who's sitting back there uh, really quickly can identify a screen and yell that out to everybody up front. But, you know, if you start to move people around because these guys think they're maybe protecting against one of your better concepts, you know, the screen's going to hit much better and go for bigger plays. So, you know, I could think, for us, we had a, a tendency to pass. And we ran all kinds of things out of a bunch formation. Still, our concepts applied to the bunch. But 
being able then to release those guys in, in one of those particular concepts, we would flood everybody to the other side. We'd like to put the bunch in the boundary, get those guys to the other side of the field. So certainly now something's going to open up where those guys were and they're taking defenders away. So the screen to that side became very good for us. Uh, I could think of, of another example where we like to run what we would call orbit motion, but that deep motion that goes around the tailback and um, we would like to you know, fake to him, fake to the, the running back and create a run there. And so one of the things we did off of that was uh, we faked that run inside, we faked that end around and then came right back and ran a screen to that running back. They got used to seeing that we were giving the ball a little bit to that guy on the end around. And so now they're reacting. We're getting people away from where we want to run that screen. And just that alone is going to clean things up, right? A lot of guys, especially if it's just a passing down where you're running that and it's it's only attached to those kinds of things, they get you know pretty good at, at again, understanding that they were let go pretty easily, retracing their steps and causing some issues for your screens. So thinking about how you can do that off of the run game, off of play actions, uh, you know, tagging it to a naked, right? The, the naked play, I think, is a really good one because you will get that flow either on the run or the defense converging on that, trying to get that quarterback. And now you have the opportunity to throw that back to uh, the place that they vacated in their pursuit of the quarterback. Uh, even we, we would think of screens off of screens. We like to run a lot of bubble. And so off of our bubble screen, we would create a slip screen, right? You have that bubble going to the outside. Uh, somebody from the outside, typically blocking, is going to step off and then come back around inside and we have our guys releasing. Now, the key for us is with all of those types of screens that I'm talking about, outside of those receiver screens, the line blocking was the same. So we didn't create new offensive line blocking for every single screen that we ran and all these variations that we could add to it. It was the exact same thing for those guys. So when we installed it in camp, it was just an application of it as we went through the season. And again, looking for those opportunities with maybe a pass concept where we can really get them away from where we wanted to throw the screen, or again, that run concept or even play action. I think those kinds of things will work really well for you. When I look at how the Browns do it, it is the exact same blocking scheme every time. At least it appears to be to me that these guys are using those same things and creating that synergy. And I know I, I had a clinic in our virtual summit that we did at the beginning of the shutdown with Joe Davis, the offensive coordinator at Albany, and they do an excellent job. And I'll put a link to his clinic in the show notes. So to summarize this screen part, as far as these types of screens uh, and some recommendations to adding these to the concepts you already had, think about the plays that you run that'll cause a reaction and open up an alley to throw the screen. These should be runs, passes, or play actions that you know your opponent will be geared up to stop. If you have a strong tendency that you know about, you may want to use a screen to exploit that tendency and that defense who's been preparing to stop it. Uh, Another thing to think about is which defenders act or react the quickest. You should learn that from film study. On one side of their defense, they may be better to screen to than the other. Those most aggressive defenders are the easiest to screen. So use that information in setting up and designing your play call. And I would say in knowing that, if there is a side that you're, you're working in a particular week, it kind of cuts things down, right? You can just work on that screen to that side, knowing that this is our best way to run this week and get your reps that way. So you're going to find some efficiency in working on the execution. Uh, when you're using these things, Another recommendation is you don't need to save those for later in the game, right? I I always think about, has a play been set up? And that play may have been set up because of the tendencies that you created. So a lot of times it's just merely confirming that you have the defensive reactions that you expect to a concept that you've built off of. And maybe after you use it the first time, it's about having the coaches in the press box seeing when the defense is reacting aggressively. And, and the last thing is, know when you will want to run it. Uh, is there a place on the field or a certain down and distance that will get a reaction out of the defense? Again, the self-study of yourself, your tendencies, as well as knowing 
What your opponent likes to do in situations will help. Certainly, if you can get them pressuring, blitzing, that's going to help your screen situation as well. So look at all those things when you're putting screens together. The last one is if you don't have a screen installed and you don't feel that either you have the the offensive line that can execute that really well or maybe the time to perfect that, I, I like shallow screens. And I think those can provide some huge benefits without involving your offensive line. Uh, Again, looking at what we did in that virtual summit, we had Josh Herring, who's the offensive coordinator at a high school in Georgia, and he utilizes a play that they call police. And it's a concept that was popularized by Oklahoma State uh, probably about a decade ago. It's a basic shallow, which you see out of the air raid, but it's run behind the, the line. And I think there's some huge benefits to adding shallow screens. So it's a throw that's short, and it requires no read, right? You think about that situation, especially if you have a young quarterback or a quarterback who's struggling a little bit. You want to take in, in a certain situation the read off his hands. He just knows that he's going to be looking one way and coming back and throwing this shallow screen. Uh, to the defense, I think this shows that it's a drop back pass. There is nothing in here that indicates it's going to be a screen because linemen are not releasing downfield. They're not letting their, their blocks go. Uh, so there's really no key to saying screen here, right? For the quarterback, again, it's it's no thinking. The thinking's out of his hands. It's get eyes downfield, get those guys moving with the routes that you're looking at downfield, and then drop that down to the shallow runner. And you're going to have those guys who are running uh, off or going to be blocking for you at some point. They have to transition into a block. They want to get to certain points. And that's what Coach Herring explains in his clinic. Again, I'll link that one in the show notes. And again, I think that's an effective strategy against teams who are pretty good at getting into their drops and even some of those drop eight defenses. And I've seen it run multiple ways. It's that shallow screen. I've I've seen it run out of of like a uh, Texas route or an angle route where the back uh, runs his typical route where he's, he's running out and then back into the middle. Uh, I think the example I saw with that was Notre Dame a couple years ago running that with four verticals and their guys running their four verts and transitioning into blocks, getting that ball to uh, the running back behind the line of scrimmage, running that angle route, and then him just being able to get up the field because his guys have position where they need to on those linebackers and safeties to create that alley to run to, right? And it's all about finding a way to best create that alley, whether it's the, the traditional screen, which I talked about first, or the shallow screen. So some keys to that, definitely. It's not something uh, I think you just look at and say, okay, here's how we're going to run it. Uh, I would look at some clinics, and I highly recommend Coach Herring's. And again, I'll link that in the show notes. So let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball. I think I've talked about this before. One of the biggest things that uh, can wreak havoc on an offensive line is movement. But I also believe that's something that an offensive line can take advantage of if a defensive line isn't schooled up on the technique that they have to use against those different schemes when they're moving, especially as you get into something like the outside zone where you can really distort a defense. Dave Cohen at Wake Forest, defensive line coach there, did a clinic at Lawrence first and go on. I thought he used two very simple techniques, but were ways that Through his experience, he learned that he could use to beat those bigger, more physical offensive line. And so he talked about what he called get reached as one example where it allows the defensive tackle to absorb the block and free up the linebacker. And then he talked about uh, his uh, run text stunt, right? A way to stop the run with this text stunt. And they're simple things when you look at them. I think a, a lot of times we maybe oversimplify and think that we can do all these different movements the same way on on offense as when we think about, oh, we can add all these different plays. But the refinement of the technique, I think, is huge. So uh, I think a good thing to focus on this week as we're hitting midseason is not necessarily to go add more movements, but to look at the ones you have that you need to refine. Do you have certain defenders, uh, defensive linemen, who find themselves getting in bad positions or opening up a running lane because along with their movement, which might be right, they may be going the right point, but they don't have the technique they need 
to defeat a block and to constrict that space. And it's all about understanding that gaps are going to move and using a certain technique to defeat it. So whether that it's, it's the get reach technique that Coach Cohn uses or you're refining your own, I think those are very important. I think blitz technique is another one I see maybe uh, undercoached at times with linebackers that you have this guy who's very physical and he's running to get through that gap, but if, if someone steps in front of him, he gets stonewalled, right? He's giving his chest. Uh, he's not prepared to take on that, right? Whether Whatever technique you use, whether it's a shed or a, a rip, a dip and rip, right? You want to teach him to get into those positions right there that are going to defeat the block that you're using on a particular pressure, stunt, movement, blitz, etc. I think that are very important. So a lot of times these things are taught on cans. That's great because it teaches you where the aim points are. It teaches you to get there. But working that technique, I think, is important. So there's there's a few ways to do it. I know that you know you hit med, mid-season. How do you take some of the contact out of it? And I think getting your players, they know where they need to get to. But getting to that point and allowing a an offensive lineman to be fit on them, and maybe they've you know maybe it's that guy who's trying to reach somebody who's who's moved inside on a, a gap scheme, right? And that guy's going to use his momentum against him, right? How does that guy stick his foot in the ground, get stout, and defeat that block and stay in that gap, right? Not overrun the gap and allow that running back to gash you right there. So instead of running the whole thing, and a lot of times, you know, your your scout team maybe can't, uh, you know, block that as, as well as you'd like. You get your guys in that fit position. Simulate it to the point where you've made that movement, You've gotten to your point right there, and here's a certain blocking scheme that you're working. And I think for each week, it's looking at what are the things they're going to try to do to us. Are they a gap scheme team? Do they like to run counter? Is it inside zone team? Look at that scheme. Think about what is going to happen when your guys move to that if they successfully pick it up, right? They're going to be schooled up, I think, at this point to be you know midseason, getting better at picking up movement. And having some refinement in their technique. So it's about refining your technique as well. So think about putting your guys in the fit position and getting them there uh, to to defeat that with their technique at that point. So rather than just letting the movement do it, right, speed, all those things, put them in a situation where at least momentarily that guy has them and teach them to fight out of that with technique, right? It's going to keep those gaps closed. It's not going to allow the distortion that the offense wants to get. Uh, so I would spend some time on that with each concept, understanding those, showing those guys on, on film, here's our favorite movements this week, or here's our favorite blitzes. Here's what we have to prepare for with the blocking schemes that they're using, right? Put this in context of everything you know about the opponent. And then lastly, let's move on to the special team side of things. And how do we get better at this time of year? I think for all special teams, they do break down into phases. There's certain things on every single unit uh, that's going to be broken down into maybe three or four phases. So as examples, and, and this may vary based on the schemes that you're using, but punt, right? You're going to have the block at the line of scrimmage on the snap, right? Release would be the next phase. Cover, you have those guys going downfield, getting in their lanes, uh, guys trying to knock them off. So how are they working on the cover phase of things? And then converge and close where they make the tackle. Uh, Punt return. Coach Fountain at Arkansas breaks his down into four. He talks about stance, start, battle, and finish. And he has specific coaching points that go along with each of those and drills to work those. Kickoff could be... Take off, release, converge, and close. Uh, kick return, right? For, for us, the way we thought about it, it was really three phases. It was, it was the run back, right? All of our, our blockers were assigned to get to a drop point on the field. Then from there, they were taught to close and fit, and we had techniques and drills that they would work with that, and then finish the block, right? And, and our returners had, you know, obviously some different things they were looking on, add on those different phases there. But what it allows you to do is to say, where do we really need to work this week? 
we all know, especially when we hit special teams, that the individual time is limited. So to say that we're going to work every phase of it equally, you know, that spread things out. How can we focus maybe on one particular thing that we know we have to get better at in order to be uh, where we want to be in that particular unit? So maybe on uh, the punt, we really need to work on releases. So we'll spend our individual time with the punt unit that this particular week on release with uh, the, the kickoff team. Maybe it's working on that converge. They're good at takeoff. They're good at getting their releases, but we don't do a good job closing down those lanes as we get to the ball carrier. So what can we do to work that part of it? And when you think about these, again, special teams are all long field plays, right? You have a lot of running with this. So taking the legs out of it a little bit too and working on these individual parts of it, I think are going to provide some huge benefits. So take a look at each of those. Figure out what you might want to work. What do you need to work in your technique to get better at those? And maybe there needs to be an adjustment, right? In there, when you're, you're making an adjustment to a, a return or uh, to a coverage, whatever it might be, there's still going to be that part of it where the adjustment occurs. So uh, if we're looking at a, a return, right, it, it might be in like, if it's punt return, the battle portion of it, like Scott Fountain likes to identify. So if, if there's some variations there, then just work that phase of it instead of the whole thing. And of course, you're going to come back and get your reps at the whole thing. But now you've allowed your players to focus on a particular thing and get better at that and improve on it this week. So that's the adjustments for this week. We want to keep you moving along, giving you some ideas of, of things you can adjust in practice in your game plan, uh, in adding wrinkles, etc. Uh, there's there's uh, offense, defense, and special teams for you this week. Again, I'll put some of those links in the show notes. Follow all we're doing at coachingcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski. 